What is up? Pirates of Skull and Bones, it is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut. Today, we're going to talk about PvE strategies, player versus the environment. So if you don't want to go up against real players, you just want to comp stomp, you want to have a chill, sail around, vessel voyage, I got your back and I'll show you some different strategies within that. I'm going to show you the mission that you need to farm, that legendary heist, so you can get those takeover locations without having to complete a takeover. I'll show you what mission not to farm. So that way you don't accidentally get tripped up and you go through things that you don't need to. It took a while to get this video because I have every location in the Red Isles. So literally there is nothing more for me to farm here. And it takes a while for me to see the mission uh, that I can actually get free takeover locations by doing that. So bear with me, I bounce around a little bit, but all the information's here. I show you some strategies on what different boats you can use for what reasons and what scenarios those would be good. We talk about the distillery and the refinery, how the percentages work for what bonuses you can buy and what upgrades are worth it. And just we unpack a kind of a deep dive into the PVE scene so that way you're maximizing your time in the game and getting the most out of it. All right, stick with me. We're going to get all this done. One of the PVE co-op events just popped up this is what you guys need to farm now i am right in the middle of doing one of my gold routes i've got 1100 pieces of eight on board and i cannot fast travel otherwise i would do this for you but i've been waiting for days for one of these to pop up so what you are going to be going after is the legendary heist missions they are co-op missions that only three people can join and they pop up every so often as a pve player you need to farm these because the reward as you'll see over here on the right let me point out here uh it will come with the south damari foundry level one this is the only way that you're going to get these manufacturing locations to start manufacturing your pieces of eight if you're not going to go do takeovers you have to do this so you roll up on the mission hopefully there's other people there to help you if not no big deal you can probably solo it if you're high enough level and you'll fight the boss once the boss dies there'll be the item drops you'll sometimes get like a purple weapon or armor that's great but the foundry in this case would be put in your inventory. You do not receive that until you get to one of the two home bases and make a delivery there essentially. So once the mission is completed, you need to beeline for one of the home bases and make your delivery and then it will award the location. If you die in the process after that, you don't get that. You can get the drop that was the item or the armor or whatever it was, but you won't get the reward, which is the location. You have to complete it without dying. And so make sure you guys that you've got plenty of health uh, bars and plenty of food and everything you need. So if you do that, once you complete it, don't die because you won't get the location. And this is how you guys have got to farm these. And it's going to be a slower roll, but I will show you how to level up your locations to at least maximize the few that you will have because it's going to be a slower progression than if you were doing the pvp style an example of the missions you don't need to farm as a pve player are these uh colonial shipments you'll see that the possible loop is torsion springs wine brandy sometimes you'll get a purple item different things like that but there is no sight attached to that so you'll see just based on the fact that it doesn't show a foundry or uh, any of the locations you're going to get, you don't need to hardcore farm those because there are differences. So just make sure that when you are going out doing these co-op missions, you're only farming the ones that really give you <laughs> what you need. As a PvE player, you're going to be looking for more on the delivery and running side of things as opposed to just farming the locations after you do the takeover events. So because you're going to be farming your pieces far different, you're going to be spending a lot more time here on the supply network. So make sure that you are maximizing your time there. As an example, I've got three missions right here in La Esquel. I've got this roving mission for Poppy, Jumper Berries, and the Sugar Cane, and they're all three at that one spot. So I can take all three of those, sail there, complete all three of them, give them 3,600 silver, boom, they're gonna fill up my cargo, and then I can just head right back to the base, drop them off, and get them refining. Easy clap. Same thing down here, there's a couple more here at Ka Mangrove, and so I would just take both of those, sail there, get the deliveries, go home, call it a day. The attacks, those are a little tougher. 
most of the forts i'm going to say you want to look at as a co-op perspective if there's somebody else that can run with you if you've made a friend if you're looking for friends join the discord 18 to enter but we got a lot of guys that play the game a lot of us will help you farm it's i mean we're more than happy to do it we need to do the same thing anyway but the forts usually take two people i'm not saying you can't do it by yourself but for majority of players it it's going to be more of a struggle Whereas the rogue hunts, you can see the difficulty there. Like that one is a level one. That's pretty easy. You can tell it's a level one right there. You can go get that off no problem. That's a level three, might be a little tougher, but depending on how you got your ship equipped and how good you are in battle, some of these might be really easy clap. So honestly, do what works for you, but maximize your stuff here to maybe just take a couple of the hunts in a very similar location so that way you don't have to sail very far to make sure you're getting the most out of your time. And I will show you a ship loadout that I would recommend for doing this or a pair of ships and kind of show you the pros and cons of each one so you can kind of get an idea what maybe one you want to craft. We're now in the order registry. This is where all of the orders where you can take your refined goods, go deliver them for your pieces of eight. PVE players, this is the way that you're gonna be grinding until you accumulate lots of the locations that can passively be funded and get you those pieces of eight for the delivery side of things. So in this case, I have got four delivery opportunities sitting right here in uh, Dragon's Back. And so I would take all four of those, take my resources over to them and make that singular delivery and call it a day. As you level up, you'll have White Skull Gin, you'll have Blue Lotus Opium, you'll have White Skull Rum, and there's a couple different things you can get once you get your levels up. But in the early game, you're only gonna have um, Opium and Rum. And so you'll just have two different resources you have to manage instead of three or four. But make sure you're taking all of them at one location if you have enough supplies to do that. So that way you're minimizing trips back and forth and maximizing the amount of income that you are receiving from those locations. It's huge. It's really easy to be chasing your tail. Definitely want to make sure that you're grabbing all of them and making sure that you have enough cargo capacity to hold everything and that you have that actual good in your storage to put on your boat so you can go make those deliveries. You are going to have less sites to work with in the early game as a PvE player because you're just not going to accumulate nearly as fast as a PvP player would just going and doing the takeover events all the time. So right down here in the red aisles, I want to show you guys, I have multiple different sites that are levels three or level four. So the level three sites, they have an 80 storage size and they produce around 34 gold pieces an hour. The level fours, they have 110 in the storage and they produce around 40 an hour, depending on what thing you're going to manufacture there. Over here in the Indies, I've got a location that I've leveled up to level seven. This has an 800 gold piece storage capacity. And with the current thing that I'm refining there, it does 37 an hour. But you'll see that it's funded for th just under three hours. And when I fully fund it, it's funded for a full three hours. So you can kind of do it a couple different ways. You can micromanage these, keep them at lower levels, and then just go and farm them periodically. Or you can level them up with your pieces of eight so that way they have a lar far larger bank and then you just gotta fund them periodically and then only have to loot them maybe once or twice a day. So depending on really what your play style is, do whatever's gonna work best for you. What I would recommend is honestly getting one and just ranking it way up and then when it's full, you can go bank it, you're making 800 pieces or 500 pieces or whatever it might be and you're actually putting big chunks into the bank when you do that and you only have to make a singular trip which is pretty nice and if you pick one that is very close to one of the home bases um depending on your situation you're not having to go very far so you can just log in once a day or twice a day if you're playing kind of casual but you're not wanting to do pvp just sail there then sail right back and it's a pretty quick trip so that way if you're not having tons of time to grind the game out and you're just wanting to do pve that might be the best way to go for you. But once again, do whatever works best for you, but there's two different sides of that coin, whatever works. The Helm Empire Overview is where the upgrades are at. I wanna to touch on a couple things there. PvP players versus PvE players are gonna select very different upgrades. So let's take a look. The Upgrades tab is the third one over, so we'll go right in there. The developers have said that the upgrades will be reset at the end of the season. This message is not accurate to ignore that. They said that in a tweet. And so I've started buying these with confidence because I didn't want them to expire in a week. But they said it's going to last to the end of the season, which is like 90 days out from now as opposed to seven. So that's good. In the very first set of options here, 
There's a lot of things to unpack and to look into if you're going to be doing a lot of deliveries. My death mark is constantly expiring. I wish they would patch that immediately or fix that because that's so annoying. But the very first thing is master distillers. It adds a 10% chance to produce an additional item when refining contraband in the distillery. I just put 10 sugarcane into the distillery and we'll see what it comes out with because that being the case, you'd think, okay, I'll get 11. That's not bad. That stacks. You do 100, you'd actually get 110. You do 1,000, you get 1,100. That extra 100 that you get at the end of distilling 1,000 things is basically an entire delivery mission for free just because you spent some pieces of eight on this. I've bought a handful of these and I now have Master Distillers Level 2. It says it adds a 20% chance to produce an additional item when refining. Now the question I had was, will it be 20% total or will it take the 10 add the 20 so we actually have a 30 percent boon to that so when we walk over to the distillery in a moment if i have 13 we know that it stacks if i have 11 we know or excuse me if i have 12 we know that it doesn't stack and so we'll see what we come up with uh, i'm interested to get the outcome of that but guys make sure that you are going through all of these pages just by pressing up or down reading what they do and seeing if it's going to apply to your pve loop that you're doing the legendary heists and such that's what we're doing to get the missions but a lot of the stuff that's tucked into this tab is for pvp stuff so you may not want to spend some gold on that and then these other three tabs are going to be based on location so this one right here is for the red isles that's great that's for africa that's for the east indies if you don't have africa or the east indies unlocked yet ignore those completely you don't want to spend any gold there and basically be wasting it until you have those going for you advanced sugarcane production and contraband and stuff like that like read through these these are going to give you a boon to your deliveries and make sure that you're getting more resources as you purchase things there's a lot of really good things there the last page is the empire management there's some pretty wonderful things tucked in here so this is where i would also recommend spending some money increases the bonus duration time for future supply runs a supply run is something that a lot of you PvE players are going to be doing, I would say, more heavily than the PvP group. When you take a raw material such as sugarcane to a distillery location that you've unlocked by doing the co-op uh, legendary missions, you will then be able to boost its production for a period of time. It's typically 300% increased productivity for 15 minutes when you go to deliver by buying this it would be 17 minutes of that 300 percent capacity so you go drop off 60 sugarcane and they're balling out of control making you way more pieces of eight in a much quicker time and so as you go through and you level these up you can really spend a lot more time picking up pieces of eight making a couple deliveries and don't get me wrong you're going to be a courier doing all kinds of stuff but you are going to be able to get a lot of pieces of eight for that so don't sleep on these upgrades you guys make sure you go through and you read them all find out which one's going to do best for you and just make sure that you are taking into account your location so you don't buy something in a spot where you're not and have as much fun with this as you can we just talked about the different bonuses you can get out of the upgrades i'm here at the distillery i put 10 uh, pieces to be refined in there so i was expecting to get 20 or 30% bonus because I have a 20 or 30% chance to create another piece. But the word chance is the strong word there because what it actually distilled for me was only 11 products. And so it, I would say every 10 pieces or every piece that you create, it has a 10% chance to proc a free one for you to get. So if you have a 20% chance, doesn't mean you're gonna get 20% extra, you could but it doesn't guarantee it. And this is a small sample size, so I'm gonna do a larger sample size of 40 and see what we come up with there. But be aware of that, you guys, it's not a guarantee. And so as I was speaking earlier, I was like, yeah, you get 11 or 1200, you might only get like 1080 or 1150 instead of 1200. So it's gonna be a little smaller sample size. Maybe it could be greater, but I don't wanna set anybody up for failure in the premonition that you're gonna get a guaranteed 10 or 20% because that's uh, not quite how the statistics work. I distilled 40 pieces to see if it was a 20% chance, a 10% chance, if it stacked what we were looking at. And I have some interesting results. We were able to produce a total of 49 products. And so putting 40 in, I got 49 out. So that tells me that the 
upgrades do stack. It's not just 10% that goes to 20. It's 10 plus 20, meaning that you have a 30% chance when you start to stack those, which is huge. And on a larger sample size, the statistics actually work out in the favor that they should be. So I do believe that if you put a thousand in there, there's a chance you're gonna get 1300 out or very close to it. That's a huge boon for us as players. Don't sleep on the upgrades. That's good data for everybody to have with confidence going to still stuff. And uh, the more you make the merrier and the more upgrades you have, the more you'll produce in the long run. Let's talk ship strategies. Everybody's got their preference. Do you, Pikachu. If you're happy with something and it works, do that. Don't listen to some guy on the internet on saying different things, but I do want to give you some information. As far as the different ship options go, it's really between two, in my opinion. There's the Brigantine, which is the fastest ship in the game right now. It'll do 18 when you've got it at full speed, 20 with some water. That's great when you're sailing long distances, doing delivery missions or going to get commodities. That's gonna help you the most, in my opinion, because you're saving time traversing the map, spending more time plundering or actually making that delivery, whatever it might be, you're not spending so much time sailing. And it'll stop you from getting swarmed by a bunch of ships that are faster than you, should you go through a couple different sections where there's multiple AI that are gonna come at you. The other option, which is not a bad one at all, is the snow. The snow has the highest cargo capacity out of all the ships in the game right now, meaning you can pack a lot more on it. So if you're gonna go plunder a fortress and you're gonna double up or triple up on what it drops, you might run the snow to make sure you got enough cargo space to make it work, but it is a lot slower for that. Uh, when your trim speed's only like 13, 14, 15, uh, that's pretty rough in comparison. A lot of the other AI ships, the level 10s or 9s or 11s, whatever level you're at, they'll match it. Uh, that are going to be coming after you once you start to put those pieces on your ship uh, it does make it a little bit more difficult so snow slower but more cargo and better defenses or brigantine for less cargo way faster up to you either one is a good choice my daily driver is always the brigantine because i like going faster spending less time time traversing the map the other piece that I really want to talk to you guys about is the weapons. I think that the Twin Winch Ballista is one of the best PvE structure damage weapons in the game. Or just in general against structures. If you have this on the front of your boat and you have the 19% extra damage for the Ballista for the uh, type of damage that it does and you have the 10% extra damage for your front weapon and you have the extra 15% damage to structures, this thing will proc for between 30, 35 to 38, I think was the highest I saw, thousand damage on a structure. So if you hit the crit spot with this fully charged, it's doing 600% damage over the normal and in addition to that, it has piercing. In addition to that, it's got the 10% from the furniture plus another 15% uh, because you're doing it to a structure plus another 19% on the piercing damage. Like the way it all stacks, you can do so much damage to structures with this piece of equipment on the front of your ship. It drops from the co-op missions. So if you go after some of the world bosses or you go after the exact thing that you're gonna be farming to go and get uh, your locations, this has a chance to drop. Don't sleep on it. I don't like the Ballista myself, but if I'm gonna go up against a higher tier for it and I'm gonna be soloing it, you bet your ass that is on my ship and I'm absolutely gonna be using it because the amount of damage that it puts out is far more than I can get with any of the other weapons in the game. And when you take down those turrets that are putting lots of damage on you, that are shooting bombs and mortars and everything under the sun, once you eliminate those, it makes the entire plunder mission a lot easier because then you only have to worry about the boats coming at you. So food for thought on that one, you guys. I would encourage you to get these, put the right furniture on the boat, make the most of it. The other fur or the other weapons that I use is uh, the, Dar the Dardellis guns, or however you pronounce it. I always get them wrong. doesn't matter. I love it anyway. Uh, these are really good. I like them because they shoot all of the cannonballs or all the bombards at the exact same time. So when I get my ship sideways, I shoot all four, rotate to the front, shoot both of them, rotate the other side, shoot all four. And so by times I'm rotating from side to side, they're ready to go. I can get all of them off. I don't have to sit there and wait for each individual one to shoot. And so if you're accurate, you can do a lot more DPS with these on the side of your vessel. But if you are maybe not as accurate and you need to get your range a little better, 
Um, the Fire Bombard 3s are my other go-to. I use those on the front of my boat. I think they're fantastic. It's definitely one of the few blueprints that I purchased. And then for my mortar, I always run the Leopold 3. Um, we've got a bunch of the guys that have that crafting mat in my Discord. And so if you need that or you want some people to play with to help you out, uh, if you join the Discord, if you're 18 or older, we can probably find somebody that's got that. If you give them the materials, they'll craft it for you and get you going so you can get a little bit better equipment on your ship. But that, that's the game, you guys. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to handle it. I just wanted to touch on those ships. You do you. Play whatever style you like. But if you're going against the Fortress, big, big fan of that Twin Winch Ballista. It's going to do a ton of DPS for you against those forts. Hostile takeovers does not always mean a PvP encounter if you know what to look for. And so as a PvE player, I would encourage you guys to always look at the map when these come available. And you might go snipe a couple of these if there's nobody participating because then it's just a PvE event. You go do the takeover, which is essentially a plunder mission, blow up some boats, blow up a couple towers, do your thing, boom, you got the event and it was uncontested and you won. And if somebody goes in there and contests it, you can just leave. It's not that big a deal. Like you can always see who's participating. So in this case, I've got this uh, North Foundry right here, level one, but there's zero out of four participants. And so I might let that tick down a little bit. I might fast travel over here if I didn't want to participate. So I would fast travel there um, and then just like sail kind of close to it and just see. And with, you know, just a few seconds left, maybe 10 or 20, if nobody jumps in there and it's zero out of four, grab it. And then go in there, it's essentially a plunder mission, you just blow up some boats, blow up a couple of turrets, and then you've got yourself a territory, and you didn't have to fight any other players for it, it went uncontested. And if you do go in there and somebody sails in and they decide they want to contest it midway through, you're probably, probably already far enough in the percentages that you've got such a lead you'd win anyway, but if you don't want to do that, you can just sail out, uh, and they can only contest it for so many minutes after it started, so it's like... If they didn't get there right at the start, chances are they're not gonna mess with you later, honestly. It's a great way to get locations for free, essentially, and it, it's, not, it's not too bad in that regard. So I would encourage you guys to always shop around. Anytime these pop up, grab them. And now I'm gonna leave you with another strategy that you can do. This is not gonna be for everybody. Many of you will not go through this, but it's a pretty cool way to get into a low player population server where there's not as many players that are high level, meaning there's not as many kingpins to contest you. Right now the game has a free eight hours to play uh, system where Ubisoft will let you play for free for eight hours. Many of us have an additional PC or a laptop, or if you're on console, you have another console in the other room with another account, or you have a PC and a console, whatever. A second way to play the game. On that second account, get the free eight hour trial, when you log in, you're a nobody with level one and you're on a server that puts you around other players of a very similar level. What you would do is friend that account. They go onto the server with other low level players. You join that party of that player that's the low level. Once you're logged in, <coughs> log them out. You've only used maybe five or 10 minutes of the eight hours of playtime. Neat then you're on a server with not very many kingpins, ideally, maybe two, maybe three, maybe one, maybe none. I've had it to where it's none. And then when these takeover events come up or there's a cargo map that comes up or you know a treasure map, or you get the opportunity to double your gold when you're doing a mission, just go and look in the social and see who you're competing against. If you go into the world view here, you can see all the other players on the server. Right now we're all kingpins and so if i was to go double up and these weren't my friends i would be in serious trouble like i'd have people coming after me but if you go on a server and you look over and you see a bunch of these symbols that are the white ones with the dots around them they can't even see the takeover opportunities they don't get notifications for the treasure maps they don't get notifications that you're doing uh, a cargo run where you can double up your pieces of eight and so maybe try that your second account will last forever because you're only logging in for a few minutes while you join that server. And just make sure you log out and close the game on that other one so you can keep that eight hours rolling. It's a bit of a cheese, but if you're doing PVE, you're not really trying to compete with anybody. And so you're not hurting anybody by doing that. You're definitely not affecting the low level players. They don't care. They don't even know you exist because you're doing things that are not giving them notifications. And so that's a stressful way or a stress-free way to get into a server where there might not be as much population. 
as the game progresses, I think the strategy will work less and less because we're gonna have more and more high level kingpins, but I do think they've got it in place where the low level players really do stick with the new players, so that way it's not an out of balance scenario. Guys, I really appreciate you. I do have a Patreon, so if you are interested in supporting me so I can continue to do work like this to bring you information that is hopefully helpful to your day, uh, feel free to support me there. Ideally, I'd like to turn this into a full-time career where I am bringing you guys videos all the time and I don't have to slough off my day job to come and help you, but regardless, it's a passion project and that's why I'm here for it. Enjoy the game. Have fun with it. There's a ton of people shitting on it right now, and I guess they don't like that we're all having fun. I don't know. Is somebody pissed in their cereal this morning, and I don't care. If you don't like the game, don't bother dropping a comment. Nobody cares. I'll, at this point, I'm just blocking people that are like, oh, give us a cool tip, Corn. That teaches how to uninstall. I'm like, man, you are so original, just like the other 45 people that typed that same message. Why are you even here? Because the rest of us are trying to have fun. We're trying to vibe off each other. If you want people to play with or just talk about the game with, my Discord is popping right now. We've got like 15 people in a voice channel just all talking, vibing, having fun. It's 18 to enter. It's mostly dudes. We're all pretty relaxed. It's dad bods and cannons is really what we're about out here. So if uh, that sounds like it might appeal to you or you're looking for somebody to trade with or you got some questions or you would like somebody to craft a blueprint that maybe you don't have that one of us might, I hold the Fire Bombard 3s. So if you want those, hit me up. We'll figure it out. Uh, we're just sharing information, sharing ideas and helping each other. So basically whatever we can do to make it all work and play together and enjoy the game. That's what we're about. Everybody have a great rest of your day. We'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye.